Hello and welcome to the Cardiac Cats YouTube channel. Today, we're going to switch things that we're talking about over to the defensive side of the ball. And we'll be talking about this pass rush and how the Jaguars can look to break out in the 2023 season. So we'll break down their performance last year. We're going to talk about some of the changes they should look to make this offseason. And we're also going to talk about the investments they can make. And to be clear, before we really get into this, it's not as simple as we need to add this player and now we'll be good. Um, it's going to come down to obviously who's in the room, but more importantly, the way these players are coached, the situations they're put in. You know, ultimately, coaches, their success is really going to come from putting players in position to succeed. You want to put them in spots where they're doing what they're good at. And so that's going to be a big crux of what we're talking about. Um, not necessarily that there's going to be a ton of moves made, but I think there's some things they're doing that just need to change this next season, quite frankly. So we're going to go ahead and start talking about this. The first thing we will do, just show you the roster right now. Um, we'll go over the status on these players. We've already talked about this on other videos, but we'll just highlight through it. So Fadakasi is still under contract two more years on this team he's not getting cut this offseason devon hamilton i believe he's on his fourth year of his rookie of his rookie deal and he was a, a non-first round selection so this would be his last year of his deal but you're going to keep him around roy robertson harris he is on a deal right now he does offer a big cap relief of about 7.8 million so he's a big cut candidate at this point josh allen he's under contract he's on a fifth year option right now he's not going to go anywhere unless you're getting a really good draft pick and outside of that trayvon walker is your other starter for the pass rush we'll also talk about devin lloyd a little bit in here but Trayvon Walker obviously is not going anywhere. He's going to start on this team. He's your first overall pick last year. That's a pretty obvious one. Now, two other guys. Arden Key and Dewan Spoon. Both of them are unrestricted free agents right now. They will have the opportunity to re-sign here. I'm sure they will be offered deals. Um, the only player, I think, out of those two that we could see walk after this season is probably Dewan Smoot. And the reason why I say that is because despite how good he played this last season, and honestly, I think he was on track for a career year, you know, Dewan Smoot suffered an awful injury to end the season. And it's an injury that, you know, really can change the course of your career. And thankfully, in the last decade or two, um, the impacts of an Achilles tear have changed. You know, we've seen players come back from it. And so, I mean, you have hope there. But there's a chance that, you know, maybe he doesn't come back next year. They might not want to retain him after that. But I think they will. Um, just saying, don't be too shocked if that doesn't happen. So that's where all these players are sitting right now as far as their situation with the team we're going to go ahead and start evaluating this last season though so got here um these are just general ratings from pff this will kind of generally guide us um pff has its flaws as we've talked about before but it still gives you a pretty dang good idea and it's really useful for knowing statistics on these teams um the grades you know really comes down to whether you trust them or not but as far as how they graded all these teams. Um, this is the part that will probably confuse a lot of people. And we'll break down why this is the way it is. So pass rush, obviously miles above everyone this last year is Philadelphia. But look who's seventh here. That doesn't seem right. Correct? I mean, Jacksonville was not the seventh best pass rushing team last year. We all know that. I mean, I would argue that they're their bottom half of the league. And it's not that they can't be top half, but ultimately, they didn't get the sacks. 
and you know pressures can matter they can have impact um i mean just to throw out an example in the game against baltimore there was a pressure that josh allen had that forced lamar jackson to throw away in the red zone that pressure mattered because that pressure was worth four points because they went from getting a touchdown on that play to getting a field goal so pressures do matter but ultimately sacks are the conversion of pressures and you want the sacks because it's a loss of down it's a loss of yards it's just an overall huge win for the team and so you know what you saw a lot of for jacksonville was these plays where guys would break through they would win their reps but by the time they were about to get to the quarterback there was somewhere to throw it and so you know that that's going to come down to coverage a bit there's got to be improvements made and sure enough late in the season when the jaguars made changes when darius williams went outside and these players were playing in their natural roles on the team you saw the pass rush get better did we not so um the obvious change that needs to happen this season in the secondary is going to be getting a slot corner. I, I think everyone knows that, and not that Trey Herndon's just this awful player. I mean, a lot of people may think that, but honestly, the way he played was pretty respectable at the end of the year for a veteran minimum guy. But you want to upgrade over that. You want to be good at that spot. And Herndon's ultimately a really good backup to have. So when this team brings in a slot corner, that is going to help things. But I think as well, you know, another problem for the Jaguars was just the experience on this team, a new system. Um, this offseason, you got to consider this is the first time for a lot of these players who have been here in a long time that they're going to stay under the same system. I think the last time you can think of that was like that would have been under Doug Marone. So it's a little while back. So, just things to consider here. Now, we'll go ahead and we'll uh, jump back into the depth chart and kind of see here um, where they can line players up, who they'll probably keep, who they will get rid of. We talked a little bit about who could be here, who could not. Um, the moves I would make, right off the bat, um, you can keep all these guys it is possible you know contrary to popular belief problem is after this season you're you're going to be moving on from some players so if you keep everyone around this year you're going to have a lot of them going out the door whereas if one of them leaves this season you're probably not going to have to get rid of as many because you're going to have that cap space saved so um the the guy i would probably let go out of this group would be Roy Robertson Harris. And that's just because of the cap hit. I do think that um, one way they could keep Roy Robertson Harris, um, just to throw it out there, when you have, and we'll actually, we'll go ahead and pull up over the cap to look at this. When you've got guys that have, you know, these dead cap hits and you're considering getting rid of them to save your uh your ca uh, your cap savings portion so for Roy Robinson Harris 2.3 roughly is what you have in dead cap and that's 7.8 you're saving this money's getting spent no matter what so what you can do with players like that is if you want to keep them around long term or say it's just one more year even um you can basically sign a new deal where you push a lot of that money down the road. So, for example, with Roy Robertson Harris, you know, say maybe you say, okay, hey, let's re sign this to where this is 15 million over two years. We'll get your cap hit down to 5 million this year. And the next million, sorry, next year goes up to 10 million. Then you guarantee some of that money out in the future. So if you cut him the next offseason, he still gets money. And ultimately, he gets a little more 
than what he would have walking away. So there's incentive for the player to stay around and you're only paying him, you know, say five million. And that's just a couple million over what you were going to have to pay regardless because of the dead cap hit. It's money that you quite frankly cannot save. It is not possible. So just something to throw out there. But in this scenario, we are going to have Roy Robertson Harris walking. And so what I would do, sorry, what I would do right off the bat, I would move Trayvon Walker onto the defensive line. I would not have him playing as a 3-4 outside linebacker. Just because if you look at what Trayvon Walker did in college, he did not play that position primarily. And I think you want to try to set him up for success and you want to do things that he's comfortable with. And he had a whole year to learn how to be an outside linebacker. I'm not saying he can never line up there again, but I don't think that's where he should predominantly play. I think he's a guy you need to move around a bit, but the obvious spot that he should play the most is on the defensive line with his hand in the dirt. So we're going to look back, actually, at his last year in college. So we've got 2021 Georgia Bulldogs. We have the detailed positions on. This is snaps by position. So you see here, well above everything else, he's playing right end. We can see on the, actually the key doesn't show it, but these essentially, what this is, um, Ario and Elio, I believe it is, outside of the tackle on the defensive line and then down here you've got what he's playing with the jaguars right outside linebacker left outside linebacker 80 snaps he played 579 snaps so let's actually let's do the math kind of get the point here so this is his entire amount of snaps he played it outside linebacker and this is how many snaps he played on the defense 14.16% of his time was at that position. So I don't think it's obnoxious to say that's not where he should be playing. Maybe he does learn it. Maybe they keep him there, but that's not what I would do. I'd move him to where he's played before. And so how I treat this, go back here, Trayvon Walker, he moves up to right defensive end and then you have this hole for your strong side linebacker which is where he played before and you know you, something you got to consider with these defenses they are not going to only run 3-4 or only run 4-3 they're going to swap around a lot so there's not always going to be a need for this position right here or you're going to have essentially like chad muma devin lloyd or foyasada luicon playing there as linebackers so this position won't play a higher percent of the time and so um before i get way too far far ahead of myself um We'll talk about Devin Lloyd here for a minute, but point I want to make is essentially that, you know, when you're finding the replacement here, it does not need to be a full-time player. You can find someone who can play for the majority of snaps, but isn't going to play on every snap. So as far as Devin Lloyd, he was one of the problems in coverage. You want to talk about slot corner, obviously, is a big issue. The way Devin Lloyd played in coverage was also a really big issue. And he's a player that he has all the capability to be great in the NFL. He absolutely can be. But for him, he's got to settle down. He's got to feel comfortable. And so the best thing that this defense can do, you know, other than obviously having this like seven or eight month period or six months, however long you want to call it, where he gets to just sit down and learn the playbook. But Put him in spots where his task is extremely simple. You know, this is a guy who lined up on the edge in college. 
have them do that. You know, or say, hey, we want you to blitz on this play. Like, simple down, or dumb down the game for him. And put in Chad Muma when you have complex assignments because he handled them a lot better. You know, you can adjust for that. And so I think that's what they need to do with Devin Lloyd. You just, you got to build his, build his confidence up, quite frankly. You know, I think there's still a great player there. I think it's obnoxious to say he's a bust after one year. I think there's a ton more to it. I don't think this is a Caleb on chase on situation. I think Devin Lloyd can be a great player on this defense, and the team just needs to learn how to use him, and they need to get him to where he's developing well. And eventually, don't get it wrong, he will be able to do those coverage assignments. He will be able to think on the fly and make the right decision. Now, I think we'll see more of that this next year, but he had pass rush upside in college. I think you got to get him involved. So that's another thing I'd throw in here. I think that helps your coverage. I think that helps your pass rush. But going back to um, the the strong side linebacker here. So your, your outside linebacker. Now, we've talked about where players move, and that's really about all the moves I would make as far as rotating players around. I think it really comes down to Trayvon and then how you're using Devin. But you need to find someone to fill in here. Now, you could go a lot of routes. You could say, hey, let's draft a guy. Let's get a new player in here. Let's get young blood again. You could also look to sign someone free agency. But there's one guy I've seen I think makes a ton of sense. So we're going to look at free agency for this. And the reason why is because... You know, even though you've got like, you know, three or four years on some of these guys or under these guys belts for some of them, you don't really have like an aged veteran on this team. You don't have an older player and these older players as well. Once they get up so far in age, you can sign them for cheap deals where you're not paying them a ton of money. And these guys also want to go to Super Bowl contenders. And I think the Jaguars are in that mix now. I think that's very fair to say. This team would not be a huge shocker if they made the Super Bowl next year. Not that they're the favorite, but they're in the conversation. They have to be top four right now. I don't know any other team you could put other than the Bills, Bengals, or Chiefs above them, and I don't know if I'd put that whole list above them. So, one guy I really like, and we'll see here all the free agents at are on the defensive line. The guy I like the most is Justin Houston. So we'll have to find him on here. So we'll uh, rank this by sacks. So Houston this last season. Here he is. So he signed a pretty cheap deal. Play with Baltimore. So he signed... A deal for 3.5 million last year. Not a big cap hit, obviously. You know, he, he's a guy who's going to be 34 this next year. Yeah, he's old. I get it. But you got to look in, in depth on this, you know, past that. Because the way he's played, you know, he, he's not just a guy who's going to be able to, you know, play once in a while here and there. He's going to be okay. You know, he's a backup. He's a starter. I absolutely think that. I just don't think he's a guy you can play 100% of the snaps. And you see that from the stats as well. But you look at market value here. Got him at $5.3 million. So you're looking at probably a $5 million contract to bring him in. you know, Or maybe you're paying him just as much as you did um, with, with him going to Baltimore. So, let's actually uh, look at the way he's played. So, we will swap over to NFL. Actually, before we go into his, I want to show you a comparison here. So, your snaps by position for Trayvon Walker, vast majority. I mean, they did not move him around a ton. Right outside linebacker and then left outside linebacker. We'll go to Justin Houston. So 
same thing here. That's where he played the most. He also played with his hand in dirt a bit, so you can use him there. But as far as the role he plays on a defense, it, it's identical. It, it's extremely close to what Trayvon Walker was doing. And what you got to love about this too, when you go into details on how he's played, it's not just the seven sacks. His grade as a defender. I think this is higher than anyone on the Jaguars. You look at all the seasons. It's consistent. You have one year where it's a little lower, but still, I mean, that's, that's about where most of our defenses land that season. So as far as what he cost and what you're bringing in, I think it makes a ton of sense. You don't need him every snap on the field. And you see here, obviously he's played less snaps. And when you play less snaps, you're not going to get paid as much, which is the factor in why he's only about a $5 million guy. So just someone to consider. Um, you bring him in, obviously, to fill that need that gets opened up by Trayvon Walker moving to his natural spot. Um, the other thing that he brings to this team as a player is experience 12 years in the league as we see here it's a lot of time and I, I think this room this uh pass rushing room it needs the experience in it it needs that kind of player i don't think it just needs like uh bgo Jolari to fix it as great as bgo Jolari would be he would actually be a fantastic addition but i don't think that fixes every player necessarily I think as far as developing other players, you want to get someone experienced on this team. I think that would be fantastic. So that's why I like Justin Houston as an addition. Now another guy, if you want to make a big splash, I wouldn't think this is where they would go. But there is one more guy they could consider. It costs a lot of money, but could make sense once we go back to page here here we go so javon hargrave is the other guy you can consider it's going to cost a lot more though and that's the problem you're going to have he will be more productive as a player i do imagine that and he does play a different position because he's lined up on the line i believe he's mostly around where nose tackle plays we see the market value is four times as much it's just a lot more you're paying him and I'm not fully confident that Javon Hargrave is going to go have the exact same numbers he had this last year. So, see, obviously his sacks, he had his best year as a player. And I guess he is trending that direction. But, uh, you know, that that is uh, expecting a lot for him to play better than his best career year and i think he has to play like that to be valued at this kind of number and i don't think he'll necessarily get that i think he'll be like 17 or 18 million a year with his age considered in that but he's another guy you could consider and he would be able to play at a spot where you haven't really pass rushed from as much so that's something you've got to value in him I think it would be fine for this team to add someone young. You know, go get someone in the draft, especially if you have someone fall to you that shouldn't be available there. I think that makes a lot of sense. But I don't think that's do or die. I don't think that this pass rush is not able to break out this next year if there is not necessarily a new young face on it. And heck, I mean, I think there's a chance that just with the players they have that they are able to break out next year. But I think there's things you got to do to help it. You know, I think adding in a veteran does a lot. I think moving people into roles that they are good at probably does the most out of everything. I think that the best way this pass rush 
is going to be improved this year is not by adding new players on the team, but improving the guys that are on your team already. There's the potential for these guys to be really good at their job, and I think they're all showing that they're going that direction. But I think as a staff, there's just got to be more work done to set them up for success. And, you know, just put them in roles they're going to be good at. So that's how I feel about it. I think it's the place where this team can improve the most this offseason. You know, it, it is the biggest need for improvement. But the improvement, like I said, it doesn't have to come by new faces. It can come by the same old ones just playing a heck of a lot better. So I think we can trust the staff to figure something out there, especially with what they showed us late in the year. So that's all I've got today. Appreciate y'all watching. Um, once again, let me know if you got stuff you want to see on here, if you got comments on it, any input, all that stuff, more than open to it. This is literally our only our, heck, sixth video outside of On The Prowl. So, you know, we're, we're pretty young at this right now. But we'll get it figured out and we'll have some fun stuff for you this offseason. So, once again, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day.